Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel, where in part two of my Token Vision tutorial video, I'm going to cover how Token Vision works from a player's perspective. We will look at how you, as the player, can now create vision effects using new effect keywords that have been introduced, as well as assign durations for those effects and what they have for limitations. On the player side of things, we can see that our test character is on the map and I have them selected. And this is in advance of creating the various effects for what we're going to need. And for this video, I'm using a cleric of the Twilight Order as they have some pretty unique capabilities that be could become useful to add effects for. Now, first off, as I've already covered in the DMs version of this particular video, there are a couple of ways to manipulate how your character has specific vision effects. The first, specifically around dark vision, is that you can simply place dark vision on the census section here and it will immediately begin to show what's on the map that you're in. I do believe this might also work for blind sight. Yep. As well as true sight. So those senses will work in this field if you wish it to. Generally, when you apply or create this particular character and you acquire the ability to see in the dark, because this particular class does get that ability, gets a uh, dark vision capability up to 300 feet, which if I do that, that's the reason why I put 300 there, then those functions and features will work. But we don't necessarily get to keep those senses, for example, if it's a spell. Doesn't make sense. So I'm going to temporarily clear that out so that I can demonstrate the rest of the things in this video. When it comes to things that have a quote unquote duration to them, we want to look at the effects side of things. And the one I'm going to focus on in this particular case is the eyes of the night, because that's what actually gives you that dark vision range and you gain it as a feature when you take this class. There's an effect that allows you to cast or quote unquote share this vision as part of the second part of this feature with other characters in your party that all happen to be within 10 feet of you. And if you've watched the video on the Twilight Cleric, you will know that I created this particular effect and I showcased or sort of quote unquote hinted that this effect was there. The keyword word that we're using here is vision. And then there's a range and then the type. In this case, it's dark vision. So if I were to drop this effect onto our character and let me just move this over so that we can see what will happen is, is that the exact same thing that I just did when I modified things here happens. We can now see on the map. Now, dark vision respects the line of sight borders. And I currently have token uh, movement locked, apparently. Hang on one second. There we go. So as you move your character around, the boundaries set by the line of sight feature will come into play. And we'll see if that actually sticks in the case of blind sight and true sight when it comes to the player's side of the console. It didn't when it was on the DM side. But this isn't the only effect that we have. We can now make use of blind sight as well as true sight. So I'm going to temporarily add another effect to this particular character. I'm still going to call it Eyes of the Night. But instead of using dark vision, I'm going to call it blind sight. And blind sight, by its very nature, is a 10 foot range, specifically for the blind fighting style that the fighter character is going to gain through Tasha's Cauldron of Everything's optional features. And I do believe there are other classes that also get the ability to use blind sight in some way, shape, or form. But before I showcase that, I'm going to very quickly delete this effect so that it doesn't pollute our demonstration. Now, I don't have a duration in place. That's fine. I'm going to quickly drop this into place. And as we can see, the blind sight feature or functionality has now popped in. And it's this sort of lightish blue hue or hint on the map. As I move the character around, we can see that it is not actually honoring the line of sight boundaries, even though you can, in fact, not move through those particular boundaries. And there is some shadowing that can come into play. So maybe it is to a limited degree. Um, so I'm not entirely certain what that actually means in this particular case. But when I move it into this corner where there's a bit of a bump here that can 
potentially block the character's ability to see. We can see that there's a shadow that comes into play and you can't see in this area. That is actually what we want. Blind sight can't necessarily see behind objects, although technically it can in this particular case, but it's creating a shadow. So that's exactly how blind sight works. Now I'm going to very quickly remove this effect here and I'm going to delete this particular effect here because next I'm going to take a look at a spell and that is going to be the true sight spell. In this case, it's called true seeing. So I'm going to drop this into our character. It is a clerical spell, I think. Yeah, it's a divination spell. And even though it says here level one, that's just simply because of this, because of the group. It's actually a level six spell, so you're not going to get this for quite a bit of time. But you can also see that at the time of this video's recording, there is no effect here. We're going to want to add one. So if you do decide to take the true seeing spell, you are most definitely going to want to add the effect. I'm going to call this true seeing semicolon. It is going to be vision colon, the range, which is 120 feet, and then true sight. I believe this has a duration, one hour. So we want to set this for one hour. Oops, dang it, did it twice. There we go. And it's going to be, okay, so you can either touch a character or potentially apply it to yourself. So it has to be that. Now, when we apply this effect to our character, we'll see that they can now see this map and it's in color. And that is because of how True Sight works. It allows you to see in darkness as if you were out in daylight. Doesn't matter whether there was dim light or not, whereas dark vision, you have to have a source of light in order to actually see as if you were outside, i.e. bright light or daylight. And with that, I mean, it's not an overly complicated process to go through and add these effects. And from a player's perspective, that really is everything that can come into play when it comes to the new vision token features. And it's really this keyword vision. But there is one thing that I want to point out. I'm going to very quickly put an effect on the vampire here. Let me just make sure I've got them selected. I'm just doing this in the DM screen, so I apologize for that. I am going to drop a darkness spell on the vampire. There. Okay. So, when it comes to the actual true sight, this had absolutely no effect because true sight can see through a darkness spell, as can blind sight. That's the word I'm looking for. So, if I ch temporarily change this to blind. Sight, I don't know why my brain couldn't think of that word. Drop that into place. We can see, well, that's a neat effect. <laughs> the vampire actually just physically goes away. <laughs> neat. Let me see if I target him. Yeah, it goes away. Weird. Anyway, might be a few glitches still coming into play. It is a relatively new feature, so I would use this carefully. I'm going to modify this back to dark vision. And then I'm going to put that effect back on my character. Oops, not the vampire. They already have dark vision. And I'm doing that for a very specific reason. You'll see that there is a circle here. That's because dark vision is unable to see through a darkness spell, unlike the other two effects. So that's something that you'll want to be cognizant of and not get caught by surprise about. In addition, if you move into that particular field, you won't be able to see it. Now, for some reason, this pillar is kind of blocking the effects of the spell. I don't know why. But in general, you won't be able to see anything that is going on in the darkness area if you only have dark vision. You have to have one of the other two senses. So as you can see from a player's perspective, you now have the ability to control token lighting, which I've already covered in the other video. And there is a link in the description below if you want to go watch that, as well as the ability to control your vision capabilities. So through the light effect and the vision effect, you now have almost complete control over what you can see and how well you can see within a particular map. So with that, 
I hope you enjoyed this particular video, found it useful and informative, and I look forward to seeing you in the next series. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general, and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video, or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comments section. I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.